Welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of April 10th, 2023. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, a conversation about all things broadband here in the state of Maine. We have some experts that are working on this issue across Maine and some locally right here in Aroostook County. We're going to catch up with them and learn about what is happening in the state of Maine to help ensure that more folks can be connected to broadband in our state and, of course, here in Aroostook County. We'll get to that conversation in just a bit, but before we do that, we're first going to turn to the news and information that you can use again for this, the week of April 10th, 2023, and we start with this. Uh, as we had our conversation last week, we are reminding folks that as of March 31st, folks are going to start to receive uh, a envelope in the mail if you're on main care uh, with a blue uh, box on it, as you can see there on your screen. And the indication there is if it's blue, it's time to renew. So there are a number of folks as a result of changes in legislation in the post-pandemic environment that are going to need to update their contact information uh, in the um, mymainconnection.gov. And we're encouraging folks as they do that, if they are finding that they're being um, knocked out of main care eligibility, we are here at ACAP to provide um, uh, in information as well as resources to navigate uh, mymainconnection.gov and the healthcare marketplace. Now that includes the covermegovernor website, which is what we're using for folks who are in need of connecting uh, with insurance. Uh, although the open enrollment period for 2023 coverage has, has ended, there's a special enrollment period that folks who are knocked out of main care will uh, be considered as a qualifying life event. And again, we're encouraging folks to contact us here at ACAP at 764-3721 uh, to be able to connect with our services um, and our navigator services for this. Uh, a huge thanks to the Maine Health Access Foundation, uh, MEHAF, for their support to be able to help us connect more Mainers with healthcare coverage through CoverMe.gov, who will cease to be able to be in the Maine Care Program after uh, they have updated their information. Um, not all folks will be uh, removed from the program, but some will no longer qualify. And we certainly encourage you to reach out to us uh, to be able to be connected to CoverMe.gov. Um, we are also reminding folks coming up later this month on the, the 22nd of April, it's one of the two national drug take back days that we participate in here in Aroostook County. There's one in the fall. This is the spring date. Uh, they're encouraging folks at any time between 10 and 2 p.m. Uh, to drop off their unwanted or unused medications at any Aroostook County Police Department. Our prevention team here at ACAP wants to also remind you that most police departments in Aroostook County will take unused or unwanted prescription medications at any point of the day um, and you should contact them sort of before heading out to make sure that their lobbies are open to be able to take that but certainly they will be doing that across Aroostook County between 10 a.m and 2 p.m on Saturday April 22nd just as a reminder for folks uh, to be out cleaning out their medicine cabinets and being able to take care of any unused or unwanted medications. Uh, we are also inviting the community to join us if you are uh, in interested in helping our Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, which is a day center for about 20 to 30 individuals who are experiencing homelessness or housing insecurity who come to us each day at our new location at 480 Main Street. That's our new temporary location while our supportive housing project is being constructed at the One Edgemont Drive that we moved from temporarily. Um, we are welcoming folks to bring a prepared meals, lunches, snacks, uh, which are provided daily to our residents attending the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center. You can bring them in the morning. We now have an oven at this new facility uh, that we can heat them up in or cook uh, the meals, uh, finish cooking them for you. Our staff is greatly appreciative of any donations of food. We've had some community organizations that have come together um, and donated food uh, for the center and made meals, and it's much appreciated. If you want more information, you can go both to to our Facebook presence and our website uh, and find out how you can be connected to the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center meal train. We are also reminding folks that our Women, Infant, and Children's Program, which is a good resource for folks uh, with children under the age of five in the household, uh, especially as SNAP benefits have been decreased of late, to consider um, applying to become part of our WIC program. You can see uh, on your screen there the income eligibility guidelines, uh, which are more uh, generous than a number of programs that we offer here at the agency. If you have any questions, please call us at 764-3721. We do offer WIC clinics in Caribou, Fort Kent, Holton, Madawaska, Presque Isle, and Van Buren on a regular basis. 
Um, we certainly look forward to connecting with you if we can help. Uh, pregnant women are also eligible for this program. So if you are expecting, please do give us a call uh, so we can get you signed up for the WIC program. We are also reminding folks of the vast network of community cupboards located across Arushta County uh, to help folks e experiencing immediate food insecurity challenges. These are not the network of food pantries which provide more sustained uh, regular services for folks that are experiencing food insecurity. These are the uh, food uh, resources, including the one outside of our 771 Main Street Customer Service Center near Walmart in Presque Isle uh, that have non-perishable food items available 24-7 uh, for the taking. Uh, a number of these uh, sites offer, uh, offer 24 hours a day, seven days a week service. Some have special hours as noted there on your screen. We remind our community as well that these are give, uh, give what you Give what you can, take what you need. So if you are able to donate and leave non-perishable food items in any of these uh, community cupboards, we certainly would appreciate that as well. The Home Energy Assistance Program and Winter Energy Relief payments continue. Um, although there's been a high demand, especially for the Home Energy Assistance Program this season, uh, emergency fuel assistance has ended uh, officially through that particular program um, at this time, but we are still taking HEAP appointments for this season, Home Energy Assistance Program appointments. Please do give us a call if you're having difficulty paying uh, to heat your home. Uh, one of these two programs may be the right one for you, and our team can certainly help determine uh, which is the better fit for you, depending on your income eligibility. Uh, we are also reminding our community that COVID-19 vaccines and tests uh, continue to be available. Uh, we encourage you to visit the main.gov COVID-19 vaccine website to find a place near you if you are needing to be updated on your COVID-19 vaccines. You can also go to covidtest.gov or accesscovidtest.org to place an order for free tests to be delivered to your household. We also have free tests available at not only our ACAP 771 Main Street office in Presque Isle, but our locations in Fort Kent and Holton as well. And finally, if there's a need of a service or a program and you're not sure, or we haven't mentioned it here in this program, we do have navigators at our agency that are available to connect with that can help you connect with either services within our agency or those outside of our agency with community partners. We certainly encourage you to call us at 764-3721 or reach out or come to one of our offices so that we can help see what service you might be eligible for from either ACAP or one of our community partners to help you at this time. Time. And that's this week's news and information that you can use. I'm so pleased to be joined now uh, by four guests who are working on broadband issues uh, across the state of Maine and, of course, right here in Aroostook County. Uh, first, Miles Smith, who's with the Maine Broadband Coalition. Miles, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jason. Great to be here. Great to have you. Kendra Jo Grindle is with the Maine Connectivity Authority. Kendra, Kendra Jo, great to have you as well. Thank you. Uh, NMDC's broadband navigator, Jared Tapley, joins us as well. Jared, welcome to your first edition of ACAP today. Thank you very much, Jason. Glad to be here. And of course, a familiar face to our viewers, uh, Jamie Chandler, ACAP's chief operating officer, who among other folks here has sort of been working and dabbling in the broadband portfolio and how we can better connect customers uh, and inform them up here of uh, what's available to them. So Jamie, welcome back. Thanks, Jason. Good morning. All right, Miles, let me begin with you to sort of set the stage for this conversation to talk about sort of at a global level, uh, what's happening um, is, as it relates to broadband uh, connectivity here in the state of Maine and efforts to try to get more Mainers connected. Sure, thanks, Jason. So what are we talking about? Broadband, by broadband, we mean the uh, way that you get access to the internet at your home or at your business. And over the last few years, the uh, amount of data that needs to be transferred through those lines or through the air to get into your devices to bring you the internet or to bring you out into the rest of the world over the internet. The amount of data that needs to go through those pipes is just going skyrocketing, right? So 10 years ago, nobody was watching Netflix streaming in their house uh, or using it to watch a live sports event, but you can do those things now. You can also do things like create uh, videos or documents or have a Zoom call like this with multiple people using video at the same time, transferring data at the same time. All that requires a lot of data. Uh, so the old infrastructure that we use to carry the internet to our homes and businesses, that stuff has become outdated and it's become outdated 
first and foremost in those places where um, where there hasn't been enough investment in the infrastructure that brings the internet to your home. Uh, and so where we've seen that investment in that infrastructure, it's uh, improving usually your old phone line, uh, which uses a technology called DSL, digital subscriber line, DSL, that would bring the internet into your home through an old phone line. And that was pretty slow. It was great when we first started using it like 20 years ago, but now it's really outdated if you're trying to do things like this video call and you need a better connection in order to function. Unfortunately, uh, the way that we deliver internet uh, for the most part in the US is that we rely on private companies to decide where they're going to build that infrastructure and which customers they're going to serve. And when they're making those decisions, they think, where can we make the most money, where we're going to get the most possible subscribers. And so that means large cities, dense populations with people who use a lot of internet service uh, and, and even can have some geographic effects too. Is the topography nice and flat? Are there not too many trees? We're not going to have to do a lot of maintenance. Maybe the weather is nice, so the wires are going to hold up on the telephone poles for a long time. Um, when you have those kinds of decisions being made about who's going to get better internet, uh, the result is that the good internet ends up going to your bigger cities and uh, the rural places end up getting left behind. And that's what we call a market failure, where the market didn't succeed in delivering great options, good quality, multiple choices. So you have competition that keeps quality high and keeps prices down. Uh, Maine Broadband Coalition was formed to help uh, parts of Maine that weren't getting great service, where the market was failing, help educate and inform people on how they can improve their internet infrastructure and advocate at the state level for policies that would improve the situation. Now, in Arusta County, we have some areas that have pretty good service using the cable television network, typically from the country, company called Charter Communications, which you might know as Spectrum. They cover many of the towns, the, some of the major roads. They may even service telephone poles right near your house, but they won't actually service your house because you're not right next to uh, right next to a pole that they already serve. And the situation there is some people in Arista County have okay internet, cable is definitely better than DSL, and Spectrum has said that they're going to put in some money to improve it further, but it's not the state-of-the-art technology that is being put in some of our bigger, bigger cities and towns. We do have one company in, uh, based in Holton called Pioneer Broadband that is installing fiber optic uh, level technology that is the best in the class. Uh, and we'd like to see more fiber optic technology rolled out throughout the state. And we'd like to see it going to places that aren't getting good choices, aren't getting good competition. And so the solution to that was the Maine Broadband Coalition and all of our um, partner organizations and members advocated to create a state agency and to get that agency funded to solve those problems. And that's where Kendra Jo comes, comes in. So she could probably tell us more about what's going on at the state level. Perfect. Yes, Kendra Joel, let's have you pick up the conversation from there and talk about how folks are being uh, advised or, or, or educated and, and helped eventually to connect and ensure that we get more Mainers uh, access to broadband. Sure. So um, previous to our organization was the Connect Maine Authority, which was really based, which was started to address uh, mobile connectivity. But as the internet became more predominant in our everyday lives, it shifted over the last decade to focus on internet. Um, it was embedded in the state agency. It had a staff of two. Um, and as more federal funding through um, Capital Projects Fund and the infrastructure law came down, um, Governor Mills uh, back in 2022 decided to um, really put a lot of capacity in place to not only administer those funds, but deploy them as flexibly and nimbly as we could across the state. So the Maine Connectivity Authority was established. We are currently at a staff of 17. We are a quasi state entity and we work across digital equity, broadband connectivity um, and workforce development. So kind of 
looking at broadband across all of the areas that we utilize the internet and all of the ways that we could actively remove barriers to internet expansion because it's not just about getting connectivity out to homes. It's we need workforce to do that. We need uh, the supplies to do that. And we recognize that this is not just a main problem. It's a national problem. So while we're focusing on it, so is every other state in this country trying to address this need. Probably every other state except for maybe North Dakota, who seems pretty well set. Uh, they were ahead of the game a while ago. So when we look at Maine, um, one of the most beautiful things I think about when it comes to Maine, other than the beauty around me, is the fact that it's a home rule state. Communities have a lot of decision-making authority in the state of Maine. It's where you know, we vote on budgets individually, we go to town meeting, you get to know your neighbors, and you, you work together towards solving a problem. Even problems that feel like it impacts the individual, it's a, it becomes a community issue. Um, and so when we look at broadband, previously, most people thought of it as just an individual thing. It might be a luxury to some, something that a lot of people have or don't have um, based on where you live or your own interests and needs. But in the last few years, the co I mean, we'll, we'll definitely admit the pandemic highlighted the you know, very strong need for internet connectivity, not just for the individual person and resident, but for our society as a whole, for, for our economies of scale, social resiliency as well. So as we started to look at this problem over the last five to eight years, it really, we, we recognized that it belonged at the community level communities working within themselves, communities working together to solve this problem. And we recognize that where there's community engagement, community capacity building around this issue, we see a return on investment, right? So while the private sector makes a lot of assumptions about where they might make profit, when you have a community coming together around a goal and saying, we want this, and we want a certain standard of quality to make sure that our community is not just addressing a need that's current, but a multi-generational need. We see you know, what we call take rates, so the taking of that service, we see those go up. Um, we see the communications between the public and private sector about affordability and access um, you know, continue to make the private sector respond in a way that they haven't had to in the past. So from a state perspective, our funding is really reliant on community engagement. So we have funding like Connect the Ready, which is our traditional grant dollars to private public partnerships. The private sector may come in for those funds. They need to have community partnership to make those funds uh, happen. We might have communities come in because we have different operating models in the state of Maine. No community is, a, is the same. And so some communities come to the table and say, you know, we want to we want to own this. We want to control it. We see a value in a revenue generating asset. We see a value in having a seat at the table or honestly owning the table and saying, you know, this is what affordability means for us. This is what quality of service means to our community. Um, and so those communities come in with a private partner who's going to operate on that system. It's kind of like the community owns the road and the private partner owns the cars that go across it. Um, so we see lots of different operating models, partnerships come, become established. And really in the last 12 to 18 months, we've seen both the public sector, the communities and the private sector, um, those internet service providers really change the dynamic of the space. And we've seen private partners, you know, start to go in places where even a couple of years ago, they would have never been interested in going because there's community activity and communities raising their hands saying, we want something done here and we want it to be complete. We want our entire community to have access to you know, the equal service or better than, you know, better than what we had. Um, so that's where we start to see broadband across the state really expand and the connectivity landscape in the state start to change. And so we as an organization um, have a goal that Governor Mills has set of every Mainer who wants a connectivity I don't want anyone watching this to think like we are forcing you to take internet. If you don't want it, that's okay. If you're satisfied with what you have, that's okay. But we want you to have the ability to change your mind in a year, in five years, and be able to access that internet and access it at a quality that's going to meet and exceed your needs, not keep you beholden to honestly standards that were great in the late 90s and early 2000s when we were much different users of the internet. Um, so for every Mainer that wants a connectivity, we're working really hard to make that happen by 2025.
mean, Kendra, Joe, and, and Jared, to that point, you pick up sort of where, where Kendra is pointing us to, and that's in working with local communities about those local decisions, as well as making sure that anybody who does want a connectivity here in Aroostook County, that 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 can happen. So talk about your efforts, uh, particularly with Northern Maine Development Commission. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Uh, so right now we're pretty much focused on the digital equity and inclusion. Uh, so we have a coalition of local partners. Uh, ACAP is actually one of those partners. And we're trying to reach out to uh, 15 uh, covered populations uh, that is uh, defined by the state and uh, the program that we're working through. Um, that is going to generate a report that we can later use to apply for some funding down the road. And we're also using it to make sure that we are hitting all those demographics that when we do do all this connectivity that we're not leaving anyone out of it. Uh, once that reporting is kind of done, then the work with the municipalities will begin to start. Um, Aroostook Partnership, uh, along with the Aroostook County um, itself, has kind of paid for this report that came out. It's a broadband report that details uh, the 68 towns and, um, and the unorganized territories in Aroostook County. And it details out uh, a private model, <clears throat> excuse me, a public model and different approaches that towns can take that's specific to their area. Um, and if anyone would like their local towns report, uh, they can, uh, I can put my email in the chat and they feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it's also available on the Mission Broadband uh, website as well. Uh, it's the uh, Aroostook County report and you should be able to find it there. Uh, sometimes the link's down, so if uh, if you're having any trouble at all, just uh, send someone my way and we'll make sure to get the report to them. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what's going on for us right now. Great. I want to come back to that point in just a minute uh, with with Miles, Jared, about that the fact that we do have 68 municipalities and 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 looking at the plans to get those connected. Uh, but before that, Jamie, uh, Jared mentioned digital equity, and I know that that's a space that we're uh, certainly living in uh, as an agency. Uh, and Kendra Joe also mentioned, you know, to ensure that we reach vulnerable populations. So talk about some of the work that we're doing or plan to do uh, in this space. Absolutely. So um, we are. Um one of the recipients of a digital equity grant, and we are going to be um, helping to support members our, of our community to get connected to those resources like subsidies to help um, for those who may um, have challenges in being able to pay for broadband to come to their homes. Uh, we are also going to be doing some promotion countywide on what those resources are. And so um, we're really excited to be joining this space. Also, um, as Jared indicated, we are uh, one of the stakeholders in the work that NMDC is doing. And um, we've had the pleasure of being able to interview some of those um, individuals in our community with lived experience um, with broadband challenges. So um, really excited to be stepping into this um, into this new world. And as someone who uh, lives in a very rural town with without cable in my area, I'm very excited that this is gonna be a service that will be more readily available within Aroostook County. So Miles, actually, that's a perfect uh, segue to the what I wanted to pick up the conversation with you about related to both what Jared and Jamie have said. You know, Jared pointed out 68 uh, municipal units in Aroostook County, including some of the unorganized territories. Uh, those municipal units all have varying degrees of sophistication of different levels of of staffing some have no staffing just uh, you know boards of selectmen others rely on on county government how in the work and in the vision that you have done working on the governmental sector side of this um, is there sort of a, a level of some some assurance that folks will be able to access it um, if they live in some of these really small rural communities that only have boards of selectmen who are volunteers and, and not even an, an open town office or necessarily the infrastructure to get the infrastructure, if you will? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's a particular challenge for Maine, uh, in, including when you compare us with other states, because municipalities have uh, so much power as self-governing units when compared to the Midwest where a county would have the infrastructure and be expected to do all that work for you. But here it does get done on the town by town level. You'll see if you check out the report that Jared mentioned that uh, the experts who advised uh, uh, county officials and municipal officials found Lots of opportunities for towns to band together in groups and work together to bring in uh, to bring in an investment and improve their situation. Um, we've seen this all over the state, including in some very, very small towns with very small populations. 
Um, some examples include the uh, greater East Grand region, which is in the southern part of Arista County, northern part of Washington County. Kendra Joe can talk more about them. They got a uh, grant to really vastly improve their internet connection. Um, and th those are towns with very, very, very small populations. So that model is possible. Uh, there's also towns, uh, for instance, in Washington County, Callis and Baileyville, these are towns of pretty small populations comparable to some of your towns in Arista County that banded together and developed a community owned network uh, that provides where they own the network and then they invite in an ISP to serve all the customers as Kendra Joe was describing where basically they build the internet roads and then they invite in the delivery trucks to deliver all the internet to people's homes. Uh, so that's a model that worked in towns that are not particularly rich, not particularly populous. Um, so that's another option. You will find though that it, it takes more work to band together with uh, towns that neighbor you, but then you get the benefit of having expertise and you know, a great volunteer that lives in this town and a retired telecommunications expert who lives in that town and a, and a lawyer who lives in that town. And then they all get together and they can do something great together that maybe individually they couldn't do. So we definitely also will succeed a lot more quickly if we don't have to try to do this town by town for 458 municipalities in the state and many of those in Arista County. So. It will help a lot uh, to have towns talking to each other about how they can work together. Andrew, Joe, I'm mindful of the time and know that you have to leave us here in a few minutes, but to pick up from that point in the conversation, um, are there enough resources of, uh, you know, if every community is, is looking to get into this, are there enough resources to connect uh, the entirety of the state of Maine uh, for folks who want to have access to broadband to broadband? Well, that's a good question. Um, we, you know, if we wanted to bring every premise in the state of Maine up to what we've set as a broadband standard, which is 100 megabits per second download over 100 megabits per second upload, there is not currently enough funding coming in from the federal government to to make that happen. Um, we do see that's why we have to leverage the private sector. It's why we also leverage some of the public sector. We see public dollars. Um, some communities commit public dollars to this. Um, but we know that our funding can't cover every single home in the state of Maine to bring them up to that speed. Um, so in building our grant programs and, you know, we have, we have Connect the Ready, which is a private public partnership. We have a Reach Me program, which is just incentivizing providers to go that little bit further. They've left five, 10, 20 homes behind in some areas because it was just too costly to reach. So expanding on their own infrastructure. Um, the funding that we have currently from Capital Projects Fund, the next bout of funding that we have, um, it's called bead funding. I always get this wrong, broadband equity access and deployment uh, funding coming in. Um, that is designated for those unserved locations, right? So the areas where they're seeing less than 25 megabits per second down, three megabits per second up, um, those areas that really have kind of nothing or next to nothing. And we do recognize with that funding, we're going to be able to reach those homes and really get them a quality of, of uh, internet that they've not been able to have ever. And we know that those are the hardest to reach homes. They're probably the most costly areas of the state to go to. Um, if folks wanted to visit the mainconnectivity.org website, on our homepage, if you scroll down, there's a really interactive map that you can kind of start to see where you know, unfortunately for Rustic, it's a lot of red. There's also a lot of black because there's a lot of woods. Um, so if you're seeing where there's kind of no color, it's just because there's nobody living there. Um, but you're going to see a lot of red throughout the county. And we are really hopeful that we can start to deploy some of that funding really strategically in those areas and turn those red areas to green areas. Um, for Rustic County in particular, right, it's the only place we call the county. And I, I feel like you know, it's, it's a really interesting dynamic where the county has been so active in broadband. You have some really incredible leaders in your, in your area that have been thinking about this because there's that difference in local capacity, funding capacity, um, and just the way that the communities are able to work together. Townships, plantations, and organized territories, cities, towns. 
and recognizing that if every city and town in Arista County did something, you'd leave a great deal of the population behind. So we had a wonderful conversation where some municipal leaders came together, partners in the broadband space came together just, what, two weeks ago um, in Caribou, which was great to be in person, um, but came together in Caribou. And, you know, by the end of it, it's how do we do this from a regional standpoint that's either multi-regional or really countywide so that you're not leaving anyone behind and that you're bringing, you're, you're using that population across the full county to entice the private sector to continue to build out. Um, so I think there is going to be those opportunities for communities to, you know, step forward and work together. And whether it's a community of 40 or a community of 4,000, we can see those communities start to, to really leverage each other. And again, leverage that engagement to make, to make this expansion work. Um, so while maybe there's not you know, full completion, we see where we're seeing build activity might not be happening so much in Arista County, but there's an incredible amount of planning and conversation, especially at that regional and um, county level leadership, which I think is really incredible. And, you know, talking with the state, talking with Maine Broadband Coalition, the National Digital Equity Center to ensure that the resources that are available, we're, we're targeting and we're putting them in the hands of the right people. Because it's not, you know, broad, we don't want to just build fiber and string fiber on poles just for the sake of saying we did it. We want to make sure that the individual resident has the skills and the access to it, whether that's through connectivity devices, um, or through those digital skills that everyone really needs to make sure that they're, you know, being able to show up in the digital space as well as they show up in their community space. So. All right, Kendra Joe Grindle, thank you so much for joining us. I know you need to hop off. I'm just going to finish up the conversation with Jared, Miles, and Jamie. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, Jared, yeah, I'm going to- Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to sort of pick up from where Kendra Joe left off in terms of that red in Aroostook County that she spoke about. Um, how what do you see as the best pathway forward for turning that color? Well, I would say community involvement. I know we've kind of already talked about that a little bit, but if uh, like in that meeting that Kendra Joe was talking about, there was a few people on that call that were saying, like, I live in this town. Uh, Spectrum goes right by my house. I don't have their service. And they're like, who do I go to? And the answer is they're the person, you know, if there's not a community uh, group already developed, like, you know, be that beginning piece and start reaching out to your people within your community and the surrounding communities, because that's really what it's going to take to get some of these ISPs to those areas. Um, it's really going to require, you know, the larger we can appear and be, uh, the more likely we will be able to bring those things into the red areas and turn them green. And Jamie, I know that we've been working in this space uh, and not only working moving forward in terms of helping getting uh, our customers, individuals um, in Aroostook County connected, but we've also been helping in the information gathering space and holding a couple of um, uh, informational sessions that have also been uh, feedback forums, if you will, one virtual and one in person. Uh, what are folks saying? Yeah, so um, folks are saying exactly what, um, what we've been talking about today. Um, Either there is there is no access because it's not available to them where they live, or for um, for our communities that are that do have a number of challenges, whether it be income related challenges or um, housing related challenges, um, access to publicly available um, internet is also a challenge due to um, demand. And so uh, those are a lot of the themes that we're hearing. Um, so affordability and then access are, um, are, are really the, the, the key themes that we're hearing in those, in those sessions. Let's do uh, one more uh, tour of the Zoom room and get some final thoughts before we head out on this edition of ACAP today. Miles, let me uh, start with you. What have we not talked about in this conversation that you wanna make sure uh, folks who are watching take away from this conversation? Yeah, I think uh, it's important for folks watching, if you're frustrated with your internet situation, as Jared was alluding to, you are the start of the solution to your problem. So I would suggest if you're in that situation and the speed isn't good enough, the quality isn't good enough, the price is too high, uh, or you're struggling to use it effectively, uh, first, find a few people in your town that are in the same situation. Uh, five people would be great. Who, who also want to see the situation improve and are willing to do a little bit of organizing and do a little digging to uh, improve the situation. 
Then uh, second, go to your select board, see if somebody on the select board would be supportive of this. We've found that the towns that have support from the select board or the town manager or both, those are the ones that are the most successful. Then I would go to this report that Jared uh, alluded to, to see what the research is about what service is available in your town and then call a meeting and invite Jared there. And maybe Jared will invite me there and we'll talk through your options uh, with you and potentially with the state as well. It's a tough situation where, there, as Kendra Joe alluded to, there's not enough money to do everything for everyone. So we're gonna have to get creative about uh, you know, thinking long-term, mobilizing town, town funds, thinking about the future, and uh, maybe developing the project locally as they did in Callis and Baileyville, or maybe there's other uh, paths that we can take. Uh, if you're really poorly connected, you might be a good candidate for a grant that will help a lot of the way. So that's what I would do. Find some other people, talk to your select board and your town manager. If you have one, go to that report, call a meeting and talk to, to Jared to show up at it. And then we'll take it from there. And Jared Tapley, you are a regional resource for folks. What are your uh, parting thoughts in terms of things you want to make sure people know from this broadcast? Well, I, I'd just like to emphasize what Miles said at the end there. It, it's really important if you can start with that report, like say, you know, you're focused on your particular town. Um, also in the intro of that report, it kind of gives you some guidance on, you know, surrounding geographical towns that it might be good to partner with uh, when you're doing this. Uh, it's not a, a necessity that you do so. It's just more of a guided option. I know uh, sometimes it can be difficult working within municipalities, especially if you're connecting many of them. Um, however, um, the goal here would be to uh, see, you know, the end of the line where everyone has more broadband and is more connected. So if we could uh, focus on uh, building our relationships and having our community efforts be more focused on the result as opposed to uh, anything else, that would be great. And um, reach out uh, anytime if there's any questions. Uh, I may not necessarily know the answer, uh, but I would certainly, you know, uh, pass you off to someone who's very knowledgeable like Miles or Kendra Joe, and uh, we'll try to get as much broadband up in the county as we can. And uh, thank you for having us here today. Thank you, Jared and Miles. Jamie Chandler, the last word in terms of ACAP's uh, efforts and, and what folks need to know about those is yours. Certainly. So we are in the final planning stages of being able to launch um, our program. But certainly if you have a, if affordability is a challenge to you accessing internet in your areas, please reach out to our staff here at ACAP. Um, you can call our 764-3721 line and uh, we will get you connected with a navigator who will be able to help you um, to um, access whatever resources are available um, in the forms of subsidies to help um, the affordability of digital um, access in your homes. Um, and, and then as we are working with NMDC um, and are able to um, expand that, um, ACAP will certainly be at the ready to help you. Right, Jamie, and those navigators are located across the Rooster County, so there's likely one near you, but we will make sure that you are get you get connected with someone who's available at the earliest possible convenience. All right, with that, thank you very much, Miles, Jared, and Jamie, for being my guests on this week's edition of ACAP Today. Before we leave you and before we leave those of you who are watching, as we do uh, each uh, week at this point in the program, before we close out, we bring you our snapshot of the week. And this week's snapshot of the week comes to us from Southern Aroostook from one of our classrooms at our Early Care and Education Center in Holton, where not only these children and the staff, the wonderful staff that work with them, were showing their support for the Aroostook Council for Healthy Families and helping to kick off Child Abuse Prevention Month by wearing blue, uh, but colleagues um, and children across our agency uh, and customers that we serve were also wearing blue uh, on Friday, March 31st, as we were heading into April to acknowledge the great work that is done across Aroostook County and also to bring attention to something that is uh, causes a lot of families a lot of concern. And so uh, we thank uh, Aroostook Council for Healthy Families uh, for their work and we thank all of our staff who helped bring attention to this very important cause by wearing blue last Friday. Thank you to them and thank you to all of you for joining us on this week's edition of ACAP Today. We'll be back next week with a brand new edition. We'll see you then. <music>